Zishan, and today we'll discuss about these. This lecture basically is comprised of uh, two lectures. This topic is comprised of two lectures. Today we will discuss about uh, the basics of the diarrhea and dysentery and the agents uh, including viruses and bacteria. And tomorrow hopefully we will discuss about the parasites. So the learning objectives are at the end of lecture, you sh all the students should know about the difference between the diarrhea and the dysentery, medical important pathogens, pathogenesis of disease, diagnostic test, clinical course, and the management. So basically, what is diarrhea? Usually when we talk about the diarrhea, uh, we have one picture in our mind that there are increase in number of stools. It could be watery school, it could be semi-solid school stools, or it could be stools along with any blood. Usually diarrhea is associated with increase in mucus in stools. And when we talk about the blood in stools, it means that we are talking about the dysentery or the bacillary uh, dysentery that is caused by uh, Shigella, which is one of the more notorious uh, organism that causing dysentery. So there are different types of diarrhea, but before going into the uh, types of diarrhea, we should uh, know the typical classification of diarrhea that is acute diarrhea and the chronic diarrhea. Acute diarrhea, basically it lasts less than two weeks or 15 days and it usually um, stops spontaneously without any medication. The chronic diarrhea is comprised of more, more than two weeks. So this is the broad, broad classification of the diarrhea. Well, in many books or on, uh, on uh, internet, you will come across with different types like inflammatory diarrhea, like infectious diarrhea, like uh, malabsorptive uh, diarrhea. So there are lots of classification, but what I have done that I have uh, uh, classified into a broader four classification. So first of all is secretory diarrhea. What is secretory diarrhea? Basically, uh, basically water secreted into the small intestine, but it is efficiently absorbs before reaching to the large intestine or the colon. Toxin that are present, there are certain type of toxins like the preformed toxins, like in case of food poisoning, what happens the uh, a person ingest a food which contains preformed toxins and there are some enterotoxins that um, are produced by the microorganisms that ingested um, by the person in case of uh, taking any food. So in case of secretory diarrhea what happens these toxins they activate adenyl cyclase uh, activity. Adenyl cyclase are the different uh, enzymes that are present in the brush products of the epithelial cells. And I'm not going into the detail of the physiology of these uh, uh, cyclic AMP activity or at the adenyl cycle, but you should remember that these are the enzyme that causes increase intracellular cyclic AMP within the crypts of the intestinal brush borders. I'm sure that you will have an idea about what are the intestinal crypts, what are the villi, these are the structures that are helpful for the absorption of the water as well as for the different materials. So what happens when there is increased intracellular cyclic AMP within the crypts that leads to open up chloride channels that secretes water from the crypts. And therefore, there are different toxins that behave 
in that way. So secretory diarrhea usually associated with the opening of the adenyl cyclase that further increase the entry of cyclic AMP. And there are lots of agents which causes secretory diarrhea like uh, certain hormones like uh, vasoactive intestinal peptides, certain metals, certain drugs, especially those drugs which are taken for asthma and the cardiac uh, problems, some laxatives. So what happens, this secretory diarrhea starts. When we talk about the osmotic diarrhea, <clears throat> basically what happened that osmotic diarrhea is a balance or is the activity between the stool output and the intake of an unabsorbed food. Absorption of water intestine is depend on adequate absorption of solutes. If excess amount of solute are in intestine, so the water uh, will not absorb. Like if there are a lot of uh, solutes are present in the intestine, so the absorption of water will be limited and it causes uh, the diarrhea to occur. So what are the cases in which the osmotic diarrhea usually occur like ingestion of a poorly absorbed substances like carbohydrates or in case of uh, malabsorptions like uh, lactose intolerance due to the deficiency of uh, lactase which is consumed but due to the uh, lactose which is consumed but due to the deficiency of enzyme lactase it cannot hydrolyze in glucose and galactose so this lactose is retained in intestinal human and it holds water it stops water to get reabsorbed and in this way water will be secreted in the form of diarrhea so these are the major uh, like the reasons that how secretory diarrhea and osmotic diarrhea is. When we talk about the malabsorptive diarrhea, it usually, in case of mal malabsorption, what happens? The organism they covers epithelium and causes mucosal inflammation. So what happens in case of prolonged malabsorption? Will I uh, get flattened? And it could be due to some genital effect or some uh, defect in ion transport system or defect in hydrolysis of substances or impaired enterohepatic uh, circulation. So what happens that uh, it leads to the mucosal damage and uh, so the malabsorptions occurs the food will not be absorbed uh, the way it has to absorb or in case of certain um, uh, pathologies like uh, uh, pancreatic insufficiency so this these are the ways uh, like um, the why uh, malabsorptive diarrhea occurs malabsorptive diarrhea further is divided into further types like intraluminal digestion, terminal digestion, transepithelial digestion, lymphatic transport of absorbed um, lipids. What happens in case of intraluminal digestion? Usually intraluminal digestion uh, involves the di uh, uh, or you can say that it starts from the digestion of saliva, gastric peptic digestion, small bowel digestion, and the bile source, right? So what happens in this case, if there is insufficient digestion at the level of this intraluminal, so it will lead to malabsorptive diarrhea. In case of terminal digestion, what happened? The hydrolysis of carbohydrates, like I have just told you that in case of lactose intolerance, which is unable to hydrolyze into the uh, glucose and the galactose due to the efficiency of the lactase enzyme. So what happens that uh, the hydrolysis of carbohydrates and the peptides occurs in the brush border of a small, in small intestine. So what happens that if there is any defect in the digestion of these carbohydrates or the peptides, 
so this will leads to the inefficient terminal digestion so these are the different steps like in case of trans epithelial uh, digestion what happens that uh, it usually occurs across the small bowel epithelium to intestinal vasculature. So if there is uh, any um, defect in the transport of uh, materials from the small uh, bowel epithelium to intestinal vascular, so it leads to abnormality um, of uh, this trans epithelial digestion lymphatic transport is usually it uh, uh, due to it uh, it taking place by the uh, by taking absorbed li lipids but if there is something wrong with this transport channels so because lymphatic channels are running in our body at different levels so if in case of any uh, defect in this lymphatic transport system of absorbed lipids so it will leads to malabsorptive diarrhea in case of exudative diarrhea it usually occurs with the presence of blood and the pus in the stool and it is more common uh, in inflammatory bowel diseases inflammatory conditions like ulcerative colitis and severe infections like um, um, like caused by the e coli which we'll discuss later on and in case of severe po food poisoning so these are the different uh, classes of diarrhea and I'm sure that everybody um, would have understood by now so let's move on so look at this uh, uh, chart in this chart they have discussed about the diseases and the level of malabsorption that further leads to diarrheal disease uh, similar Lily, uh, like in celiac disease, what happens? There's a defect in terminal digestion. In tropical flu, again, terminal digestion and trans epithelial um, transport defect. In case of chronic pancreatitis, cystic fibrosis, primary bile acid malabsorption occurs at intraluminal level. And the uh, autoimmune enteropathy, diacycrite deficiency it occurs at terminal digestion. In this way, they have discuss the uh, different uh, diseases of the malabsorptive diarrhea and <clears throat> the level at which the problem is occurring. So I hope that everyone has understood. You can ask me at the end of question if anything you want to uh, understand. Now we are discussing about the causative again. Obviously we have bacteria, viral, and the protozoa. In bacterial causes, we have a lots of bacteria, but I am showing you here the most common causative agents like Campylobacter jejuni, Salmonella species, Shigella, E. coli, Enterocolitis, Bacillus cereus, Clostridium perfringens, Clostridium butylinum, and Mycobacterium tuberculosis. When you talk about the viral, viral are rotavirus, noro, adenoviruses, and protozoa, entamoeba, giardia, crypto, and schistosomiasis. High risk group usually have extreme age group like uh, adults uh, above 50 or the young ones. Environmental factors are also associated with medication. Certain drugs are responsible for causing diarrhea if the person is having other diseases or other comorbidities so it will be he or she will be more prone uh, to gain uh, this diarrhea travelers are more more uh, at high risk uh, group because uh, when they travel from one country to under and another country the chance of in taking contaminated water and the food is more higher so it will leads to diarrhea Root of transmission is always orofecal. Remember that it is a gastrointestinal problem, so it will not cause by some um, contact, physical contact or um, airborne infections. It, the root is always orofecal. Pathogenesis basically depends upon the number of bacteria 
that how much bacteria are present inside the food or uh, which have been taken in case of food poisoning or how much bacteria are alive inside of the intestinal tract to cause diarrhea if the number of bacteria are less or you can say that it is below the infectious dose so it might not cause any uh, pathology or any infection toxicity again divide uh, uh, sorry depends on the number of bacteria if the number of bacteria are more and they are in the dividing phase and they are releasing their toxins so the toxicity level would be higher invasive means means that the how the bacteria start to produce toxins and start to harming the uh, intestinal tract of a human body it consists of attachment first it attaches to the epithelial cells um, of the intestine then uh, then it will penetrate that will it get inside to the epithelial cells and after that it will start dividing that's called the multiplication so this is a chart in which it is very clearly shown first the bacteria enters into this intestine it penetrates the mucus layer then it enters into the epithelial cells and start multiplying normally we have normal bacterial flora that produces iga right so it prevents attachment this normal flora is uh, present in all human beings it is the immune system it part of the immune system of our body so when the uh, number of bacteria and the toxicity level are more and the patient is already immunocompromised or is Assalamualaikum, जी मैडम हेलो मैडम सलामकुम मैम जो है डिस्कनेक्ट हो गई आई थिंक वेट कीजिए सर
Kindly wait for the students. Madam, की तरफ से इंटरनेट की कुछ प्रॉब्लम है So we were here in this picture. Uh, I have just uh, discussed about the how the bacteria they enters into the intestine and they penetrate the mucous membrane. Then they multiply in the epithelial cells. In after the multiplication, they start uh, releasing their toxins and causing inflammation. Due to the inflammation, what happens? There is a vasal constriction occurs, and some other endotoxins also releases that uh, causes uh, fever and uh, other and the release of different proteins then uh, after the vasal constriction what happens there is a, a superficial uh, mucosal necrosis and ulceration occurs and then what happens there is an increased secretion of water instead of absorption and due to the inflammation there is accumulation of blood and pus along with the diarrhea along with this uh, watery secretion that's called the diarrhea so this sort of uh, uh, pathogenesis basically is more um, involved in case of bloody diarrhea because when there is uh, mucosal ulceration necrosis occurs so there is a sufficient amount of blood will be released and this blood will get mixed with the uh, water that is present inside the lumen of the intestine which is not getting reabsorbed so ultimately it leads to the bloody diarrhea mucosal adherence basically what happens there is an adhesion at the tip of the villi and after the adhesion they causes lesions uh, on the villi the villi are uh, they are like finger like projections if you remember uh, the physiologic of the villi and they are finger like pro projections which are very helpful in absorption 
so what happens in case of diarrhea the finger like projections uh, will be converted into flattening of the uh, villi and this will lead uh, to non reabsorption of uh, fluid and water and ultimately it leads to watery diarrhea mucosal inv invasiveness what happens there is a destruction of the epithelial lining and this is more common with the uh, shigella that causes uh, bloody diarrhea in tero invasiveness of e coli and campi that is the campylobacter jejuni in tero toxins that are released by the staph aureus and the vibro cholera and the cytotoxins that are released by the salmonella and entero hemorrhagic e coli bacterial causes of watery diarrhea and dysentery there is a list of organism that is very very important that you should know that which organism is associated with the dysentery or the bloody diarrhea and the which organism is associated with the watery diarrhea in case of watery diarrhea what happens there is a vibro cholera enterotoxigenous e coli enteropathogenic e coli salmonella clostridium difficile clostridium perfringens campylobacter jejuni bacillus cereus and staph aureus so these are the organism that are linked with the watery diarrhea this is very 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 important if i am saying that something is important that it means important for the examination point of view you should know that which organism is associated with the watery diarrhea or the dysentery in case of dysentery we have a list of shigella yersinia campylobacter jejuni species uh entero invasive e coli entero hemorrhagic e coli and the uh, that is e hack again this is the uh, different types of organisms along with the geographical area their transmission their ep their epidemiology and the part uh, they are linked with like some organism they act on the small intestine some organisms act on the large intestine and the complications are associated with vibro cholera vibro cholera is one of the most important pathogen that is causes diarrhea and the most uh, uh, pathognomic of the vibro cholera is uh, causing rice water stools the the consistency of the diarrhea is like a rice water so this is one of the most pathognomic feature of this vibro cholera it is uh, associated with the intake of contaminated water it is non invasive like it usually vibro cholera is uh, is uh, associated with the acute conditions of the diarrhea right and it produces cholera toxins that are very very important causing the pathogenesis and it is epidemic uh, epidemically present like it is not so it is not uh, found normally throughout the year there is a seasonal variation like it is it uh, it comes in specific season clinical features usually it is asymptomatic but in case of severe disease there is a vomiting diarrhea dehydration electrolyte imbalance muscle cramps if the patient is not treated properly then it will cause a shocked unconsciousness and death so this is uh, not important i have just shown you that how these changes occurs it is just for your information and i have uh, discussed in initially that what happens that in case of the toxin the toxin it binds with the proteins and the toxin when it enters in, inside the cell it changes the um, whole uh, you can say that the whole ion transport system or it will affect the golgi apparatus then it causes the retrograde transport system then after that basically in short this picture is not very important but just showing you that how it occurs so it uh, causes gdb to convert into the gtp and in this process nad also releases so this active gtp it causes opening of the adenylate cyclase this adenylate cyclase again it open the channels of uh, uh, potassium ions that causes release of uh, water secretions inside the lumen which is further secreted out of the body in the form of diarrhea campylobacter jejuni it is usually found in developed countries in it's associated with travelers diarrhea it is linked with the improperly cooked food or unpasteurized 
its virulent factors are associated with mortality toxin production it also produces cholera like toxin and it causes invasion one thing we should uh, appreciate that all the organisms are not causing invasiveness some some organism just they just adhere to the epithelia and produces their toxins which uh, produces further pathogenesis of the diarrhea all organisms are not linked with the invasiveness of the epithelia clinical features are they are linked with the dysentery that is the bloody diarrhea enteric fever and the complications are it causes reactive arthritis other in, uh, uh, extra intestinal syndrome like erythema nodosum and 40% cases of gullian bar syndrome gullian bar syndrome basically is a paralysis uh, it is an ascending paralysis that starts from the lower it is, uh, it is uh, it starts from the lower body parts and it starts from the lower limbs and it moves upwards so that is the ascending paralysis diagnosis is stool culture is the gold standard otherwise if the if the mechanism is not uh, uh, be cult easily find out in school culture so the biopsy is also recommended but uh, in case of biopsy uh, is linked or it is recommended in advanced stages of diarrhea like if the person is uh, having a very um, prolonged diarrhea and it is not uh, getting out of it so the doctor will suspect some um, comorbid like carcinoma so they will go for the biopsy Prostatin deficit is associated with antibiotic associated diarrhea. Like if the person is taking vancomycin, some uh, beta lactam antibiotics, initially it was assumed that only the vancomycin was the culprit of uh, antibiotic associated diarrhea. But there are certain other antibiotics as well, like beta lactams, uh, ceftriaxone, ceftriaxone groups of antibiotics that are that that are also responsible for this antibiotic associated diarrhea. And it forms the membranous like structure inside the <clears throat> intestine that's called the pseudomembranous. And colitis means that it's the inflammation of the colon. So that forms a, a false membrane inside the colon. Shigila is the, again, the root is fecal oral root. Infective dose is very stable. Like if 100 organisms are found inside the uh, <clears throat> intestinal tract so it will cause disease as i have told you earlier that uh, the number of bacteria is very important like in some cases what happens so there are a lot of bacteria are required to cause disease but in case of certain organisms few uh, number of few organisms can also cause disease it is associated with the uh, migrant workers like in in places where there is a close contact, like in daycare centers, like in hospitals, like in uh, some conferences or in a close, uh, close areas. Usually, a Shigila is not easily killed by the HCL that is present inside the our stomach, so it is more found in the left colon. And uh, it's usually symptomatic. Uh, it's usually symptomatic and self-limited. But but it, if the condition is getting worse, so it will be life-threatening. So complications are hemolytic uremic syndrome that is caused by anterior hemorrhagic E. coli, reactive arthritis, conjunctivitis, and urethritis. Type three secretion system is very very important because some bacteria have typical type 3 secretion system that is very helpful in causing this diarrhea and the dysentery uh, like salmonella like shigella like e coli so it's a basically protein appendage you can see that here this is the needle this is basically the export apparatus a needle filament which is protrudes out of the uh, bacterial surface then there is a uh, tip which forms translocation pores in the eukaryotic cells, right? That allows the entry that allows the entry 
This is the whole cell membrane or the eukaryotic cells. This step will penetrate this uh, whole cell membrane or the eukaryotic cell and it will uh, inject its um, toxins. You can say that it's, it's a system of uh, needle complex that is consists of the needle and the basal bulb. So this system is acquired by certain gram-negative bacteria, but not all. Salmonella causes uh, F uh, typhoid salmonellosis is found in developing countries like we had very bad typhoid um, nowadays as well as uh, in the last few days. And it's also associated with type 3 secretion system. Okay. Clinical features, it is starts with the loose stools, then to cholera like diffuse diarrhea, then fever. Ma'am, your excuse me, ma'am. Ma'am, your voice is healthy. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. 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 Organism can be shed in the stool for several weeks after, even if the uh, person who is having, uh, who was having um, typhoid or salmonella infection so the person will keep on shedding the organism in the stool even after the resolution of the disease typhoid has to get two types that is typhi and the paratyphi type s typhi is endemic areas where paratyphi is associated with travelers and it is associated with contaminated food uh, s typhi is one of the toughest a bacteria that uh, that can survive in gastric acid environment of the stomach and they invade the mononuclear cells and they dis disseminate or they, they spread throughout the body by the lymphatics and the blood vessels so it causes reactive hyperplasia of phagocytes and lymphoid tissues morphology the important thing is that it the uh, the uh, it causes longitudinal ulcers oval ulcers you can see this this is very obvious that is in the terminal ileum and the colon pair pages there is a longitudinal ulcers and the ulcer margins are raised and the base is sloughed like the place is not prominent and it is sort of uh, blackish in color but the margins are quite raised so it is well appreciated over here clinical features are usually common <clears throat> that is anorexia, blotting, nausea, vomiting, bloody diarrhea. And it has got a short asymptomatic phase, then the bacteremia and fever with flu-like symptoms. E. coli is enterotoxigenic E. coli that is associated with traveler's diarrhea. That is very, very important. Usually we have uh, enterotoxigenic E. coli in adults. Uh, it is associated with contaminated food and uh, more common in less than two years of age. It has got two toxins that it heat labile and heat stable toxins. So enteropathogenic E. coli is, is found in the developed and the developing countries and outbreak are more common again in less than two years of age. Then enterohemorrhagic, enterohemorrhagic is very, very important. O157H7 is a serotype that's also called the Shigella-like toxin and it causes bloody diarrhea and also causes hemolytic uremic syndrome and ischemic colitis. Enteroinvasive uh, E. coli that is very similar to the Shigella and transmitted by the food or the by person to person. And they do not, usually they, they do not produce toxins, but they invade epithelial cells. So that is a very important point you should remember. Then enteroaggregative uh, e. coli that adhere to the epithelial cells associated with the traveler's diarrhea it is non-bloody diarrhea that may it could be a non-bloody diarrhea prolonged in it is more prolonged individual with hiv infection clostridium difficile is associated with antibiotic and uh, the symptoms are almost the same very few uh, changes are found in different bacteria, like uh, it is more associated with leukocytosis. Leukocytosis is a clinical picture, uh, is a lab diagnosis that is associated with Clostridium difficile, associated with cramping, dehydration, fever, and uh, it is more commonly diagnosed by 
uh, the serology test rather than the culture. We are not doing the cultures, but we are going for the serology test or the histopathological changes. These are the whitish pussy pseudo membrane that is uh, covered the intestine. Here you can find this. This is structure that's, that that is greenish in color. That is all pussy membrane. These were the references I have taken for preparation of this lecture. Any question, please. Any question? Shigila is endemic in developing countries because uh, we don't have a proper hygienic conditions, right? The problem in, de in developing countries is that the hygiene is very poor and we do not have any um, vaccine for that. So they are more commonly present. Type 3 secretion system is normally uh, present in some gram negative bacteria. This is a typical uh, typical you can say the assembly of protein right and they are involved in ejecting the uh, toxins uh, preformed toxins or the exotoxins through a preformed assembly of uh, uh, like uh, you can you can resemble it with the uh, you can resemble it uh, with the uh, uh, syringe what happens when we get any IV injections or any IV um, drip? So what happens? There is a needle which penetrates the skin and then the drug will be pumped into uh, the skin by the nozzle. So you can, you can just resemble it with this type 3 secretion system. So this almost this is the there's a common thing through which the bacteria injected its toxins and the effectors inside the host cells. Okay, you can take the, this uh, lecture from me. Basically, osmotic diarrhea is the diarrhea which is uh, linked due to the uh, inabsorption of water inside the uh, uh, a small intestine and the colon. What happens when there is an increased amount of substrate is present? As I have uh, told you the example of uh, uh, lactose insufficiency or the lactose intolerance, what happens that lactose is a carbohydrate like, right? So lactose hydrolyzed into glucose and galactose, right? And then these glucose and galactose will further get digested inside the small intestine. But what happens when there is a deficiency of enzyme lactase, which is uh, helpful in the hydrolysis of lactose. So the lactose is present in a bulk amount. And when there is anything which is not uh, digestible and present in a bulk amount, so it will also stops water to get reabsorbed inside the in small intestine or the colon. So what happens that this water will secrete out the body in the form of diarrhea. So this is the osmotic diarrhea like it osmotically stops the water to get uh, reabsorbed um, inside the colon or the small intestine. Any any question? Further any question? Okay, sure. I will give the references. You can. Uh, okay, wait. I'm showing the references. Here are the references. I hope everyone can see that. Any question? Any question? Any question? 
Any question? I hope everyone can hear me now. I'm very um, regretting the inconvenience that has been occurred during the lecture. Actually, there were some problem with the computer and their IT system. So I'm, I'm very uh, sorry for this inconvenience. कल भी मेरी क्लास है सुबह में तो हम कल भी कंटिन्यू कर सकते हैं क्वेश्चन ठीक है